Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a stitching diagram in Illustrator. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to be doing. We're going to create a stitch diagram such as this one. This is for a stitch called Blanket Stitch. We're going to create the stitches and the fabric. We're also going to create a needle and then we're going to pass the thread the right way around the needle. So it's going to go behind the needle here and through the eye of the needle. We're also going to make sure that the needle goes through the fabric. So there's a little bit to do in terms of arranging these objects relative to each other and cutting out pieces of the objects so that everything looks correct. To get started creating our stitch effect, we're going to create a new document. So I'm just going to choose File and New. I'm just going to create a 600 pixel square document. It doesn't really matter what size document you're working with. So let's just bring the document in here. I'm just going to enlarge it by pressing Control 0. I'm going to start by creating the needle. So to create my needle, I'm going to use the line segment tool. I'm just going to draw a straight line. I'm holding the shift key as I do this so it's constrained to a straight line. And I want to adjust the stroke of this. So I'm using the appearance panel here. If you don't have your appearance panel visible, then choose window appearance to display it. The reason why I want to do this is I want to get into this stroke option. I want to increase the stroke to probably around seven points at this stage, but I also want to select this profile. So I'm going to start here by clicking on this with profile five. And that just gives me the beginnings of what's going to look like a needle. I'm also going to increase the width still a bit more. And now I'm going to zoom in. I'm clicking on the zoom tool and just zoom into the tip of the needle here so that we can see how things are going. I'm going to select the width tool here because I want to adjust the width of this line. And as I hover over it, you'll see that this has been added, this point here, by the profile. So I'm going to go down here and add another one. So I'm just going to click and drag at this point. Now, I haven't got it quite right, so let's have another go at that to create what's going to be the eye of the needle. And I'm going to press Control 0 to zoom out so I can see what's going on. I don't think I want these points, so I'm going to click on each point in turn and press the Delete key, and that will just get rid of the existing points. If I want to adjust an existing point, I'll click on it and then just drag on the handles that are affecting that point. Now, in this case, I want to go in a bit to show the eye of the needle. And let's just click away from that. Now you can continue to perfect your needle if you wish, but this is pretty good for me right now. So next up we're going to add the eye of the needle. So I'm going to choose the oval or the ellipse tool here. And I'm just going to drag out a narrow ellipse that's going to be the eye of the needle. Now I need this to be white right now so that we can see what we're doing. And I actually don't want any stroke on it, so I'm going to remove the stroke. And then press V for the Move tool. I'm just going to move it into position and size it once we get there if necessary. Let's just zoom in here. And again, just size and shape this so that it looks like the eye of the needle. Next up, we want to cut this piece out of the needle. But right now, what we've got is a line and a shape. So what we have to do is to convert this line that we've created into an actual shape. So with it selected, I'm going to choose Object and then Expand Appearance. And that just creates the line now as a shape. And because it's a shape, we can use the Pathfinder tools on it. So I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And we're going to select over both shapes. I'm just going to make sure I've got both shapes selected. And then I'm going to choose Window and then Pathfinder. And with the Pathfinder, I'm just going to select minus front because the shape that I drew, the circular shape or the oval shape was the second shape that I drew. It's going to be in front of the needle. And when I click that, I've now got a single shape. So if I go to my layer here, I've got a compound shape, which is my needle. So I'm just going to name that needle so we don't lose it. So we've started out by creating the needle shape. The next thing is, is we want our fabric. And we're just going to create that using a rectangle. So I'm just going to choose the rectangle tool. I'm just going to drag out 
something that is going to be our fabric and let's give it a color and let's turn the stroke off now I'm going to add a new layer to my layers palette here I'm going to move my needle up into that layer which allows me to now lock down my background or my fabric so that it's not going to move as I continue to work on the image here the next thing we need to do is to start out with our stitches. Now the stitches are fairly easy to do even though we're going to be using the pen tool to do them. So just click on the pen tool and we want these to be a line. So I'm just going to press D for default so that we get the default colours and I don't want any fill at this point. So let's just do a stroke and that's just going to make it a little bit easier to draw these. Now I'm going to select the layer that I'm working on because I had the background layer selected there and you can't draw on a layer that's locked down. So we're just going to click here and we're going to take off in the direction that we mean to head in which means that I'm going to click and drag to the right and then I'm going to let go of the mouse and then I'm going to come down here to where the bottom of the stitch is going to be and I'm going to click and drag downwards and I'm just forcing the stitch into shape as I'm doing this and once I've done that I'm just going to control click away from this because that's now giving me my stitch now if you haven't got your stitch perfectly right just come in here with the direct selection tool and click on either end of the stitch and you can just adjust the handles in fact I'm going to adjust mine just a little bit to make it just a little bit loopier and I can click here and adjust this end if I want to. The next thing to do is to give the stitch some body. So we're going to select the stitch and in the appearance panel we're going to increase the stroke. So I'm going to increase the stroke to, let's make it seven points. And you want to remember this point, actually let's make it six, it's looking a bit big. So remember that it's six points because in a minute we're going to need to know that. And then from the stroke drop down list here we're going to give it rounded ends because we're dealing with thread it's going to look more rounded than it is hard end and having done that what we want to do is then give it this kind of look that we would want stitches to have and to do that we're actually going to expand this appearance so we're going to choose object and then expand and right now we've got a stroke but we don't have any fill so all we want to expand is the stroke so deselect fill and just leave the stroke selected and click OK and what that gives us is an actual object that now has both stroke and fill so the fill at the moment is sort of black so we're going to select that and let's choose a different color given that we're working on orange let's now make the color thread that we're using a sort of brown thread let's make it a little bit darker than that and then let's give it an outline that is a little darker still so there's our first stitch and we're going to copy this to make additional stitches so I'm going to hold the alt key down as I drag a copy of this stitch away I'm going to place it pretty much over the top of the first stitch now I think it needs to be a little bit more over the top as if it's actually coming from that stitch so let's just adjust its position a little bit better and then we're going to do the same thing select the object with the move tool and then hold down the alt or option key as we drag a duplicate away and then again and just depending on how many stitches you want you'll just make those stitches at this point now each of these stitches is going on top of the other stitch so we're getting the layering correct if the layering were not correct if the stitches are not the way around that you want then you'll just click on the stitch that you want to change and choose object arrange and then bring it forward and that will bring it in front of the other stitches but as I said for this design this is the way that this stitch is made and it definitely is over the top of each succeeding stitch so now we've got our stitches we're ready to show our viewer how we would make the last stitch so to do that we're going to need again the pen tool and again this is not rocket science it's really simple to do so let's click on the pen tool and we're going to start here where this stitch would begin so I'm just going to click and then drag in the direction I want to head off in and I want to make a loop so I'm heading in that sort of loop direction up towards the top right of the image 
And then I'm going to come down here and create a point where I want it to loop around. And I think I want it to loop around to about here. So I'm going to click and again, drag in the direction I'm headed in. So I'm starting to make my thread as I go. I'm going to ignore this, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to click here and then click across to here. And this is where I'm going to finish my thread. So because I want this to just be a loop, I'm just going to click on the control key and that will fix this as a loop. Now I've got a couple of problems to sort out here. One is that I've got a fill as well as a stroke. Well, I don't want a fill. So let's just get rid of the fill so we can see what's happening. And let's increase the stroke to our six points. So this is the same thickness thread as we use back here. And what I did here was I clicked instead of click and drag. So I've got a point here that is not correct. So I'm just going to click on it to select it. And it doesn't have any handles right now. So I can give it handles by clicking on it, making sure that I click here on the anchor point tool. And this will allow me to then change this point and drag out some handles for it. And as I drag out handles for it, I'm going to get a more rounded shape. So let's just go and fix this looping problem. And I'm going to fix a few other problems with my thread. I think I want it to be a little less loopy there. You can just tweak this until you get your thread to run the way you want it to look. If you don't want a particular point, then click here on the pen tool options, choose delete anchor point, and you can just come in here and delete that point that you don't want. So now that we're pretty ready here, I need to start working on the thread. Again, before we expand this, we want to make sure we've got nice rounded ends. So let's go to stroke and make sure we give it nice rounded ends. And then we're going to expand it with object expand. We don't have a fill, so we're going to disable expanding the fill that we don't have anyway and just expand stroke and click OK. So now it's pretty much the same as the other thread. It just doesn't look the same. Well, with it selected, we can go and use the eyedropper tool. So I'm just going to click on the eyedropper and I'm going to click on one of these stitches. And what that does is to copy the format or the look of this stitch into our stitch. And so that's a very easy way of making sure that the thread is the same throughout. Now we need to start working on placing the needle in position. So I'm going to grab the needle with the move tool and just drag it up to where I think it's going to go. I think it will need to be rotated a little bit. So I'm just going to rotate it as well. What I'm looking for is how it needs to go through the fabric to give the impression that we're making this stitch. And I also want to line it up with the thread. So what I'm going to do here is make the needle go into the fabric at this point and I'm going to thread the thread through the eye of the needle. Now at this point, if I wanted to save the needle, I would make a duplicate of it. So I'm just going to drag this layer onto the new layer icon. And I can actually just tuck it here on the background layer. Let's move the duplicate into the background layer here, turn its visibility off and just lock it all up. So this allows me to keep a copy of the needle, which later I could perhaps even convert into a symbol just because it will save me having to do the needle work later on. The other thing is if I'm making a consistent set of these stitch objects, I want the needle to be the same in all instances. So let's go back to the needle and let's just drag it up to the top here because what I need to do is to make it look like the needle's going into the fabric. And to do that, I'm going to use the pen tool, but it's not going to be very difficult. So let's just zoom in here. I'm going to start with the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a filled rectangle. And I want it to be a different color so that we can see it more clearly. So I'm just going to make it yellow and I'm going to line it up with the fabric at this point. So there's my rectangle. And now I'm going to make a slightly curved line so it looks like the needle is sort of going into the fabric, not on a hard edge, but a little more, more soft. So to do that, I'm going to grab the pen tool. I'm just going to click and drag here to create a sort of loop and then click and drag here. 
I'm going to move that in just a minute, but I'm just going to come round here with a few clicks to create this sort of rounded shape. And when I get back to the beginning, I'm going to just press Control so that I can stop drawing that shape. Let's go and just move this shape into position. So this is giving me the sort of general collective look of what I want the needle to look like when it goes into the fabric. So let's grab these two pieces and join them. And we do that using the Pathfinder. So I'm going to choose Window. Well, Pathfinder's here, but it's hidden. Let's just click Unite. So that gives me a single shape. And I want to cut this shape out of the needle. So I'm clicking on this shape, and I'm clicking on the needle to select it. And again, I want the Pathfinder, but this time I want minus front, because this path is in front of the needle. And when I click minus front, that shape is going to be removed from the needle. I'll press Control 0 so that we can see things more clearly. You can see now that the needle has been cut, so it looks like it's going through the fabric. And we have actually cut that needle into two pieces. That's the reason why I saved a copy of the needle in case I need it later on. Now the needle is in position now in front of the thread. That's fine. The top part of the needle is in front of the thread. We've got two pieces. This is the top part and this is the bottom part. And if the top part were not in front of the thread, then I would just drag it up the layers palette until it was. This is going to cause a little bit more problem here, the bottom part and this thread. So what I want to do is to isolate in my mind where these pieces are. So here's the thread and here is the bottom part of the needle. So I'm going to drag the bottom part of the needle out of that group. I'm going to drag the top part out as well because that's going to allow me to select these two paths, the thread and the needle. I'm going to zoom in here so I can see where I'm working. And I'm going to use the Shape Builder tool because it is the simplest tool to use. So I'm going to click on Shape Builder and I'm just going to join these two pieces together. I can join it either way. It just depends on where I want the thread going through the needle. So I'm going to have the thread coming through the needle at this point. So I'm just going to drag across there. In doing this, I've lost the appearance of the thread, but I'm not worried about that because I actually have the thread that I want. So let's get the Zoom tool and let's just zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to go and isolate the thread. So let's just grab the thread here. And we're going to do exactly the same as we did earlier and go and grab the eyedropper tool and just click on this piece here because that will then give us the thread recolored. And so we've got the thread coming behind the needle, which is what is needed for this particular stitch and then being passed through the needle here. So we've completed our piece of illustration that shows somebody how to do blanket stitch. We have a needle that we can save as a symbol if we want to later on. We've tucked a version of the needle in here. And we know the kind of settings that we used. We used a six point thread here, a six point line, so that we could create other matching stitch diagrams if we wanted to later on. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.